Hello and welcome along to episode 19 of this FM21 Builder Nation story from Bangor City with me, Daniel. We're back for our first top heavy season of the series as we continue in our European qualifiers. And we've had a pretty kind draw so far in the champion's path for the Europa Conference. We know after this one we are going to get a tough test. If we get through this, we've probably got Carabag and they will knock us out. But today we've got the team with no badge. Tbilisi from the Georgian League, two-star reputation and a pretty similar rated squad to us in truth. All greyed out. So I fancy we've got a chance. I think we've got an opportunity. We have had some disappointment on and off the pitch, which we'll talk about in a moment. But this tie is the difference between being back solid financially, which we already are, and being able to build from the future with bigger funds. So if you're looking forward to finding out how we get on a big double header in Europe again, please do put a thumbs up on the video. Subscribe down below for daily FM21 content from two long-term stories. The head coach is back tomorrow and it is a big one. If you haven't seen any of that series yet, it does not matter. Tomorrow is one you do not want to miss. I'm certainly looking forward to it and I hope you are too. But this one is all about Bangor City today. We've got loads of action to come and we move into the race course. So we're playing at Wrexham's home today. A big upgrade in terms of capacity, but I'm not sure what it will do to our attendance. So let's have a quick look firstly at off the pitch action. And the transfer news is pretty easy because nothing's happening. We've got a squad we're okay with. We haven't yet got the assurance of big finances and I don't really want to invest too much for this season. K. McGlacken's offer to Connors Key was withdrawn. The striker who was coming in that di the director of football put in a bid for rejected us. As did another defender he went for. And it looks like Shane Owen, who has been in the comment section of this series, is going out on loan. So he has got a few options in the second tier. Lamfair, Cambrian and Clydak and Hollywell. So we'll see which one he goes for. The full wage is paid and a chance to get a season of first team football. But we're in pretty good shape. The staffing looking all right. We've had a couple of offers to get people in. Milan Barros has joined the club. Sammy Klingham has joined the club. And Asa Hall joined in the summer. So we're in the best position we could be. And if we get through another round, we'll look to expand that team again. Because with professional training in place, it's just about getting the best out of the players we've got. And with our squad players, that's more important. Because it's something that certainly didn't happen at the weekend. We rested everyone for Sunday's game against Haverford West. Our first one in the league season. We sort of went with the option of, we can claw back any differences here. But I didn't expect to be so lacklustre. We didn't look like scoring. McLagan, the hat-trick hero at Traflori, didn't look like having a sniff. And Barza Brett, it was a backup 11. It was a poor performance. Probably Glendon stood out, aside from that, not great. And a nil-nil draw in front of just under 600 people is not going to get them coming back for more, is it? But we have got two points deficit in the league now as a result. Barry, TNS, Cardiff met uni. All of the three regulars won their first game. Connors Key did lose though. So that's the only thing we can take a positive from. It looks like the likes of Dia Kite and Oswell both going to be big scorers this year. Gibbons looks like a star striker at Cardiff met uni. More for pace than ability I'd say. But certainly it's going to be interesting. So we'll get back to domestic action later in the season. But let's start with our qualifier against Tbilisi. A big game, the home leg important again as we try and get on top. Over 2,000 expected at the race course. Probably not as big as the attendances we've had at Nampoff, ironically. But we've gone for our first choice 11, which now includes Pixley, includes Mo Silla, who is back from his holiday, and hopefully includes a very good performance. So we've gone for Zabret in goal. It's Owen Moore and Jack Bolton, the fullbacks, with Harbottle and Hockenhoe at centre half. Goodrich, Boots, Silla, and Pixley, the midfield three. Fanny Ant and Amadi Holloway to strike force. And aside from that, there's no real surprises. Everything looks good at the club. The dynamics are fine. The tactics are good. No injuries at the moment to speak of. So it's a chance for us to really get on the front foot. We're playing against stronger opposition than the last tie, but weaker than Dinamo. So what's the result going to be? Because I think this is going to be a close encounter. Hopefully the home leg though, we can get an advantage. Let me know what you think down below as we head into the first leg. And fingers crossed, we've got one more round of action to come. I'm looking at it and thinking if we win this, we match TNS last year. They got to the fourth playoff round before bowing out. And we'd like to match the same for the coefficient. So in we go. Let's see how we get on. Ten changes from the league game. Everyone bar the keeper. And a big game of European football. Here is the lineup then. No manager again for Tbilisi. We did have a brief look at their squad in the last episode. Most of them about the same or maybe slightly below our first 11 standard. 
but then they had two or three standouts, one up front and two at the back, who are far better than anyone we've got. So it's just whether Star's overall team or whether it's going to be a team effort that wins. We're going to encourage the lads, not really motivated by it, get through the tunnel interview with optimism rather than expectation, and let's see what the first half brings. At the race course, it is sparsely populated, at least we're meeting the social distancing, even two years in the future. Let's see what Bangor City have got in store for us. Here we are early on, 10 minutes on the clock as Bolton throws in from the left. Header away as far as Goodrich, who finds Bolton again, into Samuel Fanian, loses out in the air, but it's back to Moore, and boot, into Holloway, wonderful strike from Aaron Amadi Holloway, already declining a little bit in truth, not been the best up there for us, almost down to the same rating as Jimmy Spencer now, but on less of a wage and scoring goals like that, we are very happy to have him in our starting 11, 15 gone, 1-0 Bangor, and now the clean sheet is everything. Well, five minutes to the break, it's gone very quiet. We're back for a throw-in on the right. We have had a warning to close one of their players down as Amadi Holloway attacks it again and it falls for Fanny Ann and Moore. Crosses to Holloway. He loses out. Bolton down for Silla. The pressure, the territory is there. We just need to make it count. And what a time it'd be to get a second as Bolton's into the box trying to find out a cross. He just couldn't dig it out. It was blocked easily. Silla goes in. It's a flying tackle. Thankfully for them, no contact. And he's back for Boot and Silla again. Boot. Wonderful effort. Just over the bar. Great strike from James Boot and it's over. It stays 1-0. But at half time, it's been a dominant performance and we're probably frustrated not to get a second. So we're going to get the arms outstretched. In fact, we're going to pump the fists. Let's say we want better. We're trying to get the likes of Pixley and Fanny Ann motivated. But it's not happening today. And that's the one slight worry, perhaps, is that we don't look clinical in front of goal. If Fanny Ann gets his shooting boots on, though, it could be three or four. Let's see if we can do it. Well, they've gone more cautious, and now we've got a hamstring problem for Goodridge. We're going to bring Kretschmar on, and we're going to drop Silla into the holding role, which he can do pretty comfortably. Defensive midfielder on defend, Kretschmar in as a Carolero, now rated better than both Glendon and Liam Nolan, who's outside the 18. Pixley's had a poor game, so Roger's on for him, and that's what we're going for. K. McLaggen got a hat-trick off the bench against the Sam Aranese side, don't forget, and he's going to get another appearance here, because it's not been a good day. For Samuel Fanny Ann. 20 minutes to go. We're going to demand a bit more. I just need a second goal. At 1-0, I'm not really confident. We saw on the road at Dinamo Zagreb. When we were on the back foot, we struggled. It's a positive sign that this side haven't had a shot whatsoever. But with three minutes of stoppage time being played, it would be a lovely time to score. Though it looks like Tbilisi have got the chance. They've got him behind here. The centre-half's caught out. He's rounded the keeper. And it is a brilliant save by Gregor Zabret. If we conceded that, I think we were out. But thankfully, Zabret to the rescue. 1-0 is the final score to Bangor. We dominated the match. 14 shots to their one. But in truth, they had the best effort in the last minute. We're lucky to come out of that unscathed in the end. So we'll tell the lads they did well. We'll try and build confidence. We've got a second tier side in Conwy in the cup. One that we beat very heavily in both of our league encounters in season one. But then we'll be back for the big game. The second leg of this one is going to be very tense. And I will see you in a minute for that. Here we are then, back for the second leg away in Tbilisi. We're heading to Georgia with a slender 1-0 lead. And we're looking to hang on to it. But there's more important things to be said yet. If we have a look at the schedule, we did get through quite comfortably in the League Cup second round. It's not a competition I'm worried about in truth. It's not got big money attached to it. We can see we've drawn Airbus in the next round. And you can see also we've got a very packed schedule coming as we catch up for the European games. But it wasn't a good performance. We were 0-0 at half-time, one all after the hour. It was only really when we brought on Samuel Fanny Ann, who scored a hat-trick off the brace going attacking, that we got through. So there is a lot to be concerned about. And if we can sneak through in this European tie, next season we'll have enough money to regenerate this squad. And this year's first team can become largely the backups and we can add a good six, seven, eight people to try and make it a bit stronger. We've also got a little bit of transfer news. Shane Owen has now left the club. The director of football trying to sign another young one to replace him. But we've already got Gwenault, so that's not needed. But he's going to get a season of football at Cambrian and Clydeac. And we wish him the best in the second tier. Already made one appearance, conceded one, did okay. And hopefully a season will help him. But today, the big difference is finances. It will either go up to around half a million as we guarantee the next round, 
or it will stay at this for the season and by the end of it we'll probably be back to near enough zero. So we have got to try and get through here somehow. We're still staying below the wage budget and the transfer budget. If we get through another round, we can think about one or two more bits of star quality. But that might not be needed, because if we look at the Premier Division, TNS managed to lose at home to Connors Key. Cardiff Met Uni managed to draw at home to Newtown on Tuesday. And as a result, again, it's only really Barry Town who have started well. They haven't played their second game yet. And we've got a lot of catch-up, so two games a week might be difficult. But it looks like they're the only contenders again. TNS signing good players every season and flattering to deceive again. So we'll wait and see what happens there. I think really they probably need a change of manager. It hasn't happened for a little while and they continue to struggle. I think the late run last season saved him. But again, they've started poorly. So we'll keep an eye on that. But we have gone for exactly the same first 11 as the first leg. We've changed 11 players from the cup tight. Not one of these guys started in that. But they're all in good form. They're all match fit. And we'll try and rotate as the season goes on. So into a massive European game financially. Coefficient wise for the nation. And it's the same trusted 11 with the job in hand. Can we get a result in Georgia? Anything but a defeat. And even a defeat by one goal if we score is enough to get us through. So let's see if we can do it. And whether that away goal will be crucial in incoming. There's the 11 changes confirmation. We are in to the big game here with Bangor. And again, it's a very similar lineup. They've got the star striker. They've got the skipper at the back. And Teddy Ashvili, the left back, who is one of the best rated players there. So let's get the lads to impress us. Do their best. Bolton's motivated. Hankins pleased. And the rest have not reacted at all. Probably not what we were looking for. Let's see if we can get a goal. It must be said that the first two goals in that cup tie, Fanny Ann's first... And Amadi Holloway's open up. Both rockets. Absolute screamers. And we do with another one tonight. As Owen Moore's got it at right back. It's a bit hard to tell really as the ball comes in. Holloway's header down. It's a good save on the line. Fanny Ann on the rebound. And third time puts it in. But the flag's already up. It's still 0-0 on the night. And it's still a slender advantage. Away to Dinamo, we really struggled on the road. Away at Traflori, we were probably even better than the home leg. So this one, where are we going to be? After 20 minutes, they've matched us up for the diamond. And we've not been able to get on top as Fanny Ann finds Moore at right back. Chance to come over halfway. Goes inside to boot. Nearly scored a screamer in that first leg. And down the line to Fanny Ann. He's got Amadi Holloway in the middle. Picks him out beautifully. It's a great save. Keeper tips it onto the post. It's incredible goalkeeping. And it really should have been 1-0. But again, denied by fantastic goalkeeping. As Pixley picks the ball up in the middle to boot. Chance to go wide to Moore. Trying to get those fullbacks a bit further up the pitch as Moore slides it in. But it's intercepted by the skipper and back to the goalkeeper who's in wonderful nick. As it's long cleared to Bolton. He hoofs downfield and the clearance is only going to find Owen Moore at right back. Time to come over halfway. No real pressure on him. Slides into Fanny Ann. He's one on one. Beats the keeper to it. And that away goal is crucial. One all, we're through. Two one defeat, we're through. So the host, Tbilisi, now need three. I think that's enough for us. And here we are again on halfway. It's a free kick for Hockenhole. They're still yet to have a shot. Bar that one brilliant chance they had at the end of the first leg. They've not had a shot on target all tie. As Fanny Ann rounds the keeper. He takes it a little too wide this time though. Can only find the side netting. At half time, I think we're going to lead 1-0 on the night. And 2-0 on aggregate. It's a very professional job well done. I may add one game to our qualifying campaign. We'll have to keep an eye on the latest scores, actually, to see how Carabag are getting on. If we go and have a look at them, where are they on this list? They're probably a bit further down the alphabet. Although it didn't seem to be laid out in any sort of order in that sense. But let's get it to Bolton at left back, as we're back with another highlight. We just don't want to give them a sniff or an opening. Long ball to Fanny Ann, holds up for Silla. Finds Boot and Pixley. He's got a man over at right back, but instead goes forward. Surges into space. Everyone backs off him. Puts Fanny Ann in. It's a great block. And it falls for him out wide again. Back to Owen Moore. Chance to cross. Does that well. And he's headed away as it doesn't pick out anyone in particular. It falls for Silla. He's got Bolton flying on the overlap. He finds him. Bolton's got acres to get the cross in. Just delays it though. Back to Pixley. Into the box. Beats two men. Second cross is blocked. Back to Bolton. Into Fanny Ann. Drops down for Boot on the rebound. And that is surely tie over now as the host will need four. And in Georgia, it's been another brilliant away display. And another fantastic result for Bangor City. What a way to bring off a playoff game. 
I just want to have a look now. Can we see what the score was? I think there's a bit of an issue there. We couldn't scroll at all, but let's go back to the subs. Silla's going to have a rest. Kretschmar will come on for him in central midfield. Pixley will be replaced by Rogers in the number 10. And at the back, either Harbottle or Bolton. I think we'll go Harbottle for Boddenham. It's not really much of a weakness to the team. But with 20 minutes to go, as long as we don't concede four, we're through. And that is all we need to worry about. And here we are with nine minutes to go. And it is still all Bangor City. We've actually looked really good on the road here. We've dominated the match. And we've got to make the most of this. Because we've matched TNS's performance last year. As Jack Rogers is in. Oh, he's hit the post. Almost his first goal for the club. But we've matched TNS from last year. We're helping to gradually improve that coefficient. If we can get up into the top 100, start getting seeded for the latter rounds, I think that'll make the difference. Of course, we're not seeded for the playoff if we get through. And that's why we've drawn a bigger side like Karabag. As Teddy Ashvili comes down the left-hand side. Goes all the way back there. Finds his skipper, but I'm not sure why. Real lack of ambition there from the host. Over the top, though. It's into the centre forward. Holds it up left side of the box. Chance to cross, but goes back. Into the middle. It's a good block. And Kretschmar hacks it away. A little bit of a scare there. A first shot of the match for the host. But we managed to hold on. Two minutes of stoppage time. It's a 2-0 win. And it is a thoroughly professional job. Very well done. Brilliant performances. Brilliant result. And we are through to the fourth qualifying round. Another chance to match TNS from last year. And a brilliant way to improve the coefficient. So there's the confirmation. Let's go through and find out who we're facing. We are facing Carabag. So how did they get on in their tie? They, let's have a look. If we go to the schedule. Oh, it was Europa League they fell out of. So they lost in the Europa League. And that means they've fallen into the Europa Conference to face us. So we now have the chance against Carabag to cause a miracle. They're a three-star professional side. If we just take a look at some of their players, they have got real good attributes. And I mean a class above ours. Let me show you different areas of the pitch just so you can see. I mean, that striker's League One championship in England. The same for that winger. He's possibly a Premier League player. Him on the right, they're good solid players. So let's be honest, this is probably the end of the road. Like Dinamo was in the Champions League. But I know it's going to affect our league form for another two weeks. It is a massive opportunity. A chance for us to match the coefficient. More money coming in. 82,000 for that one. And we're going to be near the half a million mark. And that's absolutely incredible. So let's go and have a look at the schedule. We've got Lynette Town off camera. And we've got Barry between the two Carabag games. Not really the opponent we were looking for. Because they will take advantage. Of course a good start in Europe themselves. But they were out before the season started. And they're probably our biggest title rivals. Based on TNS's start. So we will be back in a week's time. It is Carabag away and at home in the Europa Conference qualifying. If we win it, it's remarkably group stage football. But we are heavy, heavy underdogs. So if you're looking forward to that and you did enjoy this thoroughly professional job in the third qualifier, please do put a thumbs up on the video. I wouldn't rule out transfer action just yet, but I don't think we're going to have to do a lot. And we'll see if we can compete for the title after this European disruption early in the season, particularly with Barrytown United starting as well as ever. If you want to stay up to date and find out how we get on, as well as a big episode from the head coach tomorrow, please do subscribe down below and turn that notification bell on. You'll get alerts as daily content releases at 3.30 every day, rotating between that head coach story and this one. And we've got two weekly live streams as well. You'll get alerts as we go live. And of course, there's much, much more to come as well. But a massive thank you for your support with this channel and the podcast as well. You can catch up with all the playlist links in the eye above and there's plenty more to come over Christmas. A really exciting time for the channel, a really exciting time in both saves. And I hope to see you next time for a big one in Europe as we head off to Azerbaijan. Azerbaijan.